Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the Nerd on the Street, and today we are taking a look at how to get started with LibreOffice Base. So I'm taking a class in school right now called Microsoft Applications, and you can imagine I don't like the Microsoft part of it, but I do enjoy learning how to use the applications a little bit better. And recently we learned how to use Microsoft Access, which that's the only Microsoft Office program that I've never been able to figure out on my own time. I never really tried very hard, but um, you know, years ago I had opened up Microsoft Access, and when you open up Microsoft Word, it's pretty easy to figure out how to use it. And even Microsoft Excel, when you open that up, it's pretty clear how you use that. But Microsoft Access actually takes a little bit of prior understanding and prior knowledge about just setting up a file in there before you can actually start doing anything. And even though the new Microsoft Access, you know, the version 2007 and 2010 that have the ribbon and a bunch of wizards, the newer versions of Microsoft Access are getting easier to use. LibreOffice Base is still sort of like the 2003 era Microsoft Office, where we've still got file menus and edit menus and, you know, all the menus along the top of the screen. And it's still a little bit more difficult to use LibreOffice applications, especially LibreOffice Base. LibreOffice Base is the database component of LibreOffice, and basically, if you need to keep track of a large amount of data, or you know any amount of data, if you need to keep track of data, and that data consists of not only numbers, but also words, then you might want to consider using LibreOffice Base rather than LibreOffice Calc, which is the LibreOffice version of Excel. LibreOffice Base allows for much stricter organization of information, and it allows for much easier searching and sorting of information as well. So yeah, this video is just sort of an introductory tutorial on how to create your first LibreOffice project and create a table within that project, and also setting your ID field to automatically increment so you don't have to do it manually every time you make a new record. Okay, so here we are on the desktop. So the first thing we're going to do is, of course, open up LibreOffice. And here it is. Now you can either open up LibreOffice Base directly, or you can open up the LibreOffice Launcher like I like to do. And then you can go over to the sidebar and just click on Base Database. And here we are. Every time you open up LibreOffice Base, you're going to get this wizard. And the wizard gives you a couple of options. You can either create a new database or you can open an existing one. But even though we clicked on create database and that's why we got this box, even if you've already made a database, you're going to see this wizard. So we'll look at how to open up a database later. For now, we're going to create a new database and leave it at the default type of database. As you can see, this is a an HSQL DB, um, which what this is, it's a database that's contained all in one file. It's all zipped up into one file, so you can move that one file around and keep track of your entire database. That's why it says embedded. It's definitely all in one file, so we're going to keep that type. You've got a couple of options here. Do you want the wizard to register the database in LibreOffice? Yes or no. What this will do is if you click on yes, which we're going to keep it on yes, you'll be able to go into LibreOffice Writer and generate reports from information in your database. Or you'll be able to go into LibreOffice Calc and generate spreadsheets based on information in your database. So just like Microsoft Access is based a lot around Microsoft Office integration, LibreOffice Base is based a lot around LibreOffice integration. This option will allow you to integrate your database into other LibreOffice programs, which we do want. And then you can select what you want to do when the database file has been created. We're just going to open it for editing and we will click finish and it asks you to select a directory. So we'll go into my documents folder and we will type in knots database. And you can see the file type is ODF database. It's the only option we have. And we will click save. And in just a moment, now we have our database. So this is LibreOffice Base. This is what you will see when you open the program up. And like I said, it can be kind of overwhelming because you don't know what any of these buttons do. You don't know where to go to get started. So a database, a database holds information. We know that. So we want to put some information into our database. The quickest and easiest way to start doing that is to create a table. So we are going to go ahead and create a table. We're going to create that table using design view. And here we can create different fields for our table. Now a big reason why you would want to use LibreOffice Base over LibreOffice Calc is LibreOffice Calc, the spreadsheet software, you can make a structured spreadsheet 
where one column has certain information, another column has a different type of information. However, it's on you to actually enforce that structure. You know, if you create a LibreOffice Calc spreadsheet and you say, column one is for products that I've bought and column two is for the prices of those products, that's all well and good, but if you accidentally mess it up and you type the price into column one instead, nobody's going to yell at you for it. LibreOffice Calc is going to say, all right, that's fine. You just put that data into that cell. LibreOffice Base is for when you really need something structured. Um, if we want column one to be the name of a product, we do not want to be able to put a price into column one because that's not what we want. We want the name in column one. So these different fields, this is kind of confusing, but these different fields are different columns in our database. So each row that you see here is going to become a different column later. So the first column that we're going to create is called ID. And every single table that you make needs to have an ID column. Now if you don't make it, then LibreOffice Base will ask you if you want to create it automatically later. I'm going to show you how to make it yourself because it's a good thing to know. So you need an ID column in your table because sometimes two different rows in your table will have the same value. You know, there might be two different products with the same price and two different products with the same name or the same brand. So sometimes different cells in your spreadsheet will match up and that's normal, but the computer needs a way to tell those cells apart. In LibreOffice Calc, the way that it does that is with the, the number of the cell. In LibreOffice Calc, you have cell A1, A2, A3, and then going down, uh, you have B1, B2, B3, the next row is C1, C2, C3. That's how LibreOffice Calc works. That's how a spreadsheet works. Well, in LibreOffice Base, we can actually sort our table in different ways. So what cell A1 in one situation might end up being cell C1 in another situation, if that makes any sense. So if we're moving these rows around and we cannot rely on the number or the order of the rows to identify the different information in our table, we need to have another way to identify it, and that way is with an ID field. So create a field called ID, or I think you can call it whatever you want. We're going to call it ID because that's what Microsoft Access calls it. The field type we are going to change to number, and right over here we're going to right click and click primary key. So you can see there's a little key icon here. This field is now our primary key field. What that means is that any two rows cannot have the same ID number. The ID field is going to be our, our computer's primary way of telling different rows apart. All right, next up, we're going to create a, a fictional table here so that I can demonstrate some things to you. So I called this file Knots Database, and we're just going to use some of the Nerd on the Street personnel as our test information later. So when we're identifying different Nerd on the Street personnel, let's, let's think about what we want. We want first name, um, text, yeah, that's fine. And you can put a description here. Actually, let's just do name. Um, because I'm not sure if all of our employees want their last name on the internet, even though I think that's silly. So in our description here, we'll put name of the employee. And the description is just sort of, you know, if you forget what's supposed to go in this field, you look at the description. Here we'll put phone number. And obviously, we're not actually going to put the real phone numbers into this. We're just going to put that. And we will go ahead and select number for this field as well. And then just to demonstrate another possible field type, I'm going to put date joined, day that the member joined knots. And we are going to change this field to a date type right there. All right, so this looks good for our table. These are all of the columns that I'll want to start out with. We can come back and add more later, but for now we are going to come up here and click save. And you will get a dialog box where you can type in the name and by default it's table one, we will put not staff is the name of this table because that's what we're going to keep track of with this table. So we click OK, now it's saved. So we'll come up here, we'll click file and close. Uh, we didn't actually close LibreOffice Base, but we did close that table. So here we are back in the LibreOffice Base home screen, I guess. And down here you can see we now have a table called not staff. We're going to open that up and we're going to add some information to it because that's what this video is all about. So in this ID field, like I said, this is our primary key and there needs to be a piece of information in here. If I try and tab over the next field right now, I can type in my name, Jacob Kaufman, and uh, I can put in my phone number. 
and then I can put in the date joined. Oh, that, that phone number didn't work. All right, so that brings up an interesting point. Like I said, LibreOffice Base is very specific about the type of information that's supposed to be in a cell. So the reason why what I just did did not work is because you see I'm putting dashes here. So it just says, no, you put dashes and that's not okay, so we're just gonna put a zero here instead. Um, if I were to put those numbers without dashes, then it works. But yeah, you cannot have dashes, it seems, in a number type. So we'll have to go back and change that field type later, actually. Um, the date joined, I'm just gonna make this up. It was around 12 June 2012, somewhere around there. Now you can see we had an error inserting that record, and the reason why, you can read this error message here, attempted to insert null into a non-nullable column ID. So null means nothing. So this is telling us we attempted to insert nothing into this column, and you cannot have nothing in that column. Like I said, this is our primary key. Right now the computer does not have any way to tell which record this is. Even though it's got my name, there might be somebody else who happens to have the name Jacob Kaufman, and also happens to have a phone number of zero and happens to have joined back in 99. Don't worry guys, we'll fix these two things later. I'm just trying to demonstrate ID to you right now. So the computer needs an ID. We are going to start the counting at zero. Now if we go through and tab, uh, now you can see it works. So you have to insert, the next one would be one. I highly recommend starting at zero. It'll just make your life a little bit easier. Uh, when we go and do something else later. But yeah, just like in uh, LibreOffice Calc, we can double click on our column, our column separators up here to automatically change their size, except I actually don't like that size as much. All right, so what's up with our date joined here? Did it just not work because we didn't put an ID field in? 12 June 2012. Nope, June 12th, 2012. All right, so that worked. So I actually, I'm in the habit of writing um, dates in this order, 12 June 2012, I put the day first and then the month and then the year. This is how they do it in some, I think, European countries. That's what I've heard from teachers at school, at least, is that this is how they do it in Europe. And I actually like this system because you don't have to have a comma um, because, you know, the, the, the two numbers are separated by the month. But it seems that LibreOffice Base was made for Americans because it is not recognizing that format. So, yeah, just type in June 12th. 2012 and we'll see if there's a way to fix that later because I bet there's a way to get it to recognize the format of the date that I was just typing in but for now we'll just type it in like this press enter you can see it converts it to how you want it displayed and you can change how it's displayed also but it displays it by default as um, month slash day slash year so next up we have to type in the ID one to create a new uh, a new record name I think the next person who joined was probably yeah, Michael no phone number um, that's not quite working yet we'll get back to that and then date joined um, completely making this up but March 3rd 2013 sure all right so one annoying thing about LibreOffice base that I noticed right away coming from Microsoft Access that I learned how to use at school was the ID field in Microsoft Access it automatically fills itself in in Microsoft Access, this would already have a 2 in it, and it would have pushed me to the next column. You don't actually have to type in the number manually in Microsoft Access. You do in LibreOffice Base by default. However, we can set up auto-counting in this column, so you don't have to type in the number of the ID every single row. So I'm going to show you how to do that, because I think that's pretty darn important. So we're going to go ahead. We don't need to save, because whenever you go from one record to another record, the record you were editing saves, the row that you were editing saves after you exit out of that row. So we don't have anything to save. We will go ahead and close this, this table. And we're gonna go down here and we are going to edit this table. And what we actually want to do is we want to unset this as the primary key and we're going to delete the ID field. And the reason why we're doing that is because the ID field, you can see right here, it's a number type. And that's actually not what we want. I know I showed you guys how to do it wrong. I was demonstrating how the ID field worked. So now we're going to create another field called ID. This time we're going to make it an integer type. And the reason why we want an integer type rather than a number type is because the integer type has this option called auto value. We're going to turn this on. And this is something you can only do with an integer type. You cannot do this with a number field type. 
And what this will do is it will automatically assign a value to the ID field every single time we create a new record. So every time you make a row, it will automatically put the next number in the sequence in for you, which is just going to start at zero and go up from there. And you can see when I clicked into the ID field here, when I clicked into the field name, um, it automatically set this as our primary key, probably because we called it ID. Just in case it does not automatically set this, right click on the field and just make sure the primary key is checked. So we are going to save that. It's automatically moved to the top, probably because it's the primary key. We will X out of that and open this up. So now you can see we still have a zero and a one in our ID column, but now if we go and we type in our next person, and we'll use Adam for this, Adam Herrera, and phone date joined March 3rd, 2013. What? Okay, this is just getting funny how inconsistent this uh, this date field is. I'm gonna have to look more into that because I've actually never had so much trouble with the date field. But in this video, I'm demonstrating the ID field to you. And you can see back here, we did not type in an ID field, but the ID field was filled in for us automatically. It's got a two in there. It's just gonna keep going up for everyone we add. So the next person will put Brett, Brett, Threth, three, four, five, and August, whatever. 2014. Yep. So it appears if you don't use a comma, then we'll just leave your formatting alone. I'm going to make a whole separate video on the on the date, guys. But you can see the ID field fill itself in with a three, and that will keep on going every single time we add anyone to this database. So for me, figuring that out was kind of a challenge, and that's why I wanted to make this introductory video. Um, it can be, you know, if you're not watching a tutorial or if you're not looking at anything, if you just open up um, LibreOffice base, you're probably not going to be able to get very far because, yeah, it, it takes a lot of work to set up this table, but now that we've got it, we can expand it and then we can do some really cool stuff with it later. So yeah, that's how you create a very simple table in LibreOffice base and that's how you get your ID field to automatically go up every time you create a new record. If any of you have any questions about LibreOffice Base, if there's anything specific you want to know how to do, let me know in the comments section down below and I'll make sure to make a video about it. Like I said, this is one of quite a few LibreOffice videos that I plan on making. Because now that I know how to use LibreOffice Base, I want to show you guys how to use it too. And I want to figure out some things that I don't know right now, such as that date thing. And of course, our phone number field's still broken. But that's for another video. You know what? That's for another video. So I'm Jacob Kaufman with NerdOnTheStreet.com, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.